Welcome to the Sagittarius Solar Festival webinar. Our guests today, Michael and Tuya Robbins. And they will share with us on the topic of the group Antakarana. And uh, as a title for this presentation and our work today is one of the hints given by Tibetan master. All ashrams are found upon the Antakarana. Michael, Tuya, thank you very much for finding time to join this webinar and share with us. Welcome. Thank you, Alexander, and all members of the 2025 initiative. Uh, we're very happy to be here. Um, I wonder um, if you could give me uh, my screen, perhaps, and yes. then I'd be able to, while that's going on, I just want to to say that, um, hi, Tui and I will be um, uh, first discussing the subject in general, and then Tui will be speaking about the particular energies that can be contacted through the Antikrana work. Then uh, I presume there will be the question and answer session, and then we will lead a meditation with, um, I think, um, to you beginning the meditation, and I will uh, close it. So um, I just want to say a few words before we talk about this blend of Sagittarian energy along with the subject. The subject is actually, uh, it's actually quite interesting um, because DK in his discussion of hints um, seems to suggest that he was the one whose master gave him the, uh, the hint. He oftentimes talks about a disciple receiving the hint um, we're dealing with the subject of the Antikorana here in red. Um, it will link us with the spiritual triad and the soul-infused personality. <clears throat> okay, such a hint was once given by a master, I imagine it's Master K.H., <clears throat> to one of his disciples, which I imagine is Master D.K. now. Uh, by way of illustration, he said, learn that all ashrams are found upon the Antikorana. It took the disciple a full two years to arrive at the hidden significance of this trite statement. And then somewhat ironically, he says, can you arrive at it in any quicker time? And I imagine the answer is no, <laughs> we cannot. But we can say a few things. Um, and I have a few things to say before Tuya talks about the energies which we will be um, dealing with. <clears throat> Whenever we're thinking of uh, Sagittarius, we think of the shooting of the arrow. It was very important at the time of individualization. Uh, the solar angels came forth on a Sagittarian impulse. Uh, says the Tibetan, the sun was in Sagittarius when the first human tendencies struggled to the fore. The stage of animal man was completed, and when Sagittarius was dominant from our planetary standpoint, and I'm using my words with care, um, the great event of individualization took place, but the brain of the then human being failed to register what had happened. And in the words of the old commentary, and these are very, very potent words when you think of Sagittarius uh, and individualization, the sons of God shot forth like arrows from the bow. The forms received the impulse, and lo, a god was born. The tiny babe knew not the great event. And then he goes on to tell us that it took another 3,000 years before the, uh, the impregnation of solar angelic energy came to the fore and the human being could say, I am uh, in Leo and realize that to be the case. Now, <clears throat> just a few words about our process. Uh, we're going to be working a little bit with the stage of Antikorana building called projection. 
uh, it, with which Sagittarius is very much associated. The shooting of the arrow upward and really projection is a change in a point of tension. We always have to raise our point of tension to a greater degree in order to uh, understand more. We have to do it with quickness, swiftness, because then we will avoid the encumbrances of lower identifications. We'll shoot straight through them what the Tibetan calls a rapier-like alignment. A Sagittarian arrow is a process which, uh, in the way we are using it, intensifies our point of tension. And frankly, we need a great intensification of the point of tension if we are going to be able to focus eventually uh, not only within the spiritual triad, but even be able to receive that energy. So this arrow of thought and of light, which we shoot in the Antikorana process, uh, will access a higher vision and eventually a true revelation. We're going into a realm which I call non-local and which all have access to. Within the spiritual triad, which is the, uh, let's call it the personality of the monad, there's the synthesis of all qualities. So all the ashrams and all of their qualities within the triad, especially now, since 1925, are interconnected. This is much more so than in the past, and there's a lot of uh, borrowing and mutual exchange of energy, and the new group of world servers is the reflection of this new, uh, relatively new situation. Of course, it's almost 100 years old, but uh, uh, it's new in terms of the modern disciplic movement. So uh, the, the Antikorana really, interestingly, is sevenfold in all of us, and thus we are all connected with all the ashrams. But there's a certain linking according to our soul ray particularly, and uh, in any one incarnation according to our personality ray. <clears throat> this Antikorana is not only vertical, it is horizontal, and really, it connects up the entire universe, leading to the very height of the universe eventually, but that's a long time in the future. Even our solar logos is far away from that. <clears throat> so uh, the Antikorana, as we think of it, leads to the monad, it leads to Shambhala. It is all containing. And it's a Mercurian process, you know, and Mercury has wings on its heels, and uh, it, it's part of this flight into a higher state. This Antikorana continues on and on and on, and uh, even a great galactic logos is part of the Antikorana process. But we need rapidity uh, of projection in order to avoid the encumbrances. So Sagittarius uh, is strongly related to this level of abstraction that we find in the triad. It's a Gemini Sagittarius process uh, and uh, we could say Gemini below and Sag above, but we could say it the other way around too. So each one of them is related to the spiritual triad. Our particular frontier at this moment is Budi Manas. Uh, the will lies ahead and we're learning how to cultivate it, uh, but mostly it is the Budi infused Manas which we are trying to achieve. And when we think of the spiritual triad and the ashrams, which since 1925 are found thereon, we can relate Sagittarius to Atma uh, uh, through the direction of the will. We can relate Sagittarius to Buddhi through the suddenness of the uh, intuition, uh, the point containing all suddenly appearing. And when we relate Sagittarius to the abstract mind, we have the breadth uh, of the abstract mind thinking in terms which include the whole planet. So we're interested now uh, in a sudden white light, a sudden illumination, a sudden inspiration. And when you look at the stages of meditation according to the signs of the zodiac, you have Leo concentration, Virgo meditation, Libra uh, contemplation, uh, Scorpio illumination, and interestingly enough, Sagittarius inspiration. That's what we can find at this time of the year and build that into our causal body, breathing in the energy of fire, the energy of the higher gods. So we uh, need not the lower desire, but aspiration and the touching of that which faith 
can reveal. So this is our project overall, but when we um, move into the higher levels uh, through the projection process, uh, which we'll you know, deal with in the meditation itself, we meet certain energies. And um, Tuya is going to uh, discuss the kinds of higher energies which we can um, encounter if we do the process correctly, uh, bring them down, build them into our causal body, and apply them uh, in the three lower worlds. So I'll uh, turn this over then to Tuya, who will discuss uh, these matters. And uh, I'll, my screen can be changed from presenter to whatever. Thank you. <clears throat> so hello to everybody. I tried to put also the video on if that is working there okay hello hello from finland so um, this is fantastic uh, subject altogether and we were thinking that uh, when we talk about such areas that maybe we would be looking also these um, amazing constellations which are affecting via the uh, Sagittarius. Michael was talking already about this flash of intuition and here is your first image where you can actually see some kind of um, visual ways that the, the Jupiter, Jupiter is very important in that starting energetic point. And, and um, we could talk about this image, all kinds of things, but just note this um, on the bottom, you see these uh, Devic lives. We will talk about that a little bit later, or actually quite soon. Now I try to get this uh, image moving. So when we think about these keywords for Sagittarius, I see the goal, I reach that goal, and then see another. That um, uh, expresses us the whole idea about the Antakarana as well. So there is this projection to the next step, to the next step, to the next step. And that is how we build from below. When we think about Sagittarius, one of the symbols of uh, Sagittarius is that when we move from the stage of uh, thinking about center, that there is the lower animal in us, and then there is the man, the perfected man. So all these purification or vehicles belong the whole idea. And uh, it is said that in Sagittarius, we become the first time like a real real disciple. So when we are thinking about our path under these energies of Sagittarius, it is all the time uh, bringing us towards the gate. Sagittarius is said to be the guardian of the gate. So the building of Antakarana is also guarding work. We have to understand how we are um, in the crater work, how we need to guard it. It is not, uh, not always to be so spread abroad. It has to be kept within oneself or within the group itself in order to move forward. Let us see, does this image change? So now, let us start to... Yeah, I apologize, we cannot see your screen. Can you uh, sh try to show uh -huh. it again? Press show your screen. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I was... <laughs> by accident, I put it away. So do, do you see it now? Yes. Yeah. Oh, how long it has been away? Just a few seconds. Okay. Good. So anyway, now let us um, uh, think about these constellations which are behind Sagittarius. First, we can think this great triangle which is in the heavens. It is also called the gate of angels. This is uh, formed by three birds, Cygnus, Lyra and Aquila. And uh, if you have been and are familiar with the 
uh, labors of Hercules in Sagittarius, he is supposed to kill the Cephalian birds. Somewhere they are uh, telling that these are those birds, but they are really high. Um, that may be in one sense when we uh, are very infant and we are catching these energies and that is uh, stimulating our devic life so there is a huge noise within our head but the more we uh, move towards the discipleship the more these energies are established within us and the more we are going into the center which is the point in the center and that is something what we have to remember now when we talk about the Antakarana building and the Antakarana building is about triangle work but within the center uh, it is said that Christ appears and that is the most important thing for us always to see that wherever there are a triangle form there is also that point in the center and that is this um, direct access to the highest point that we can think which it goes through us to the ne next step to hierarchy to Shambhala and further and further on and that is established in the heavens so um, and when we work with the building of Antakarana it is always related to Deva kingdom as well so now the first constellation behind oh by the way I, I just want to point out that that triangle in in the gate of heaven we uh, connect these three signs which are the Sagittarius Capricorn and Aquarius so we could talk about that too but just contemplate within yourself what would it mean for you so now when we think about Lyra uh, it is a uh, very important uh, constellation in that sense that there is found the star Vega. Do you actually see my mouse moving on the yes, screen? Yes. Okay, yes, yes. Here we see the Vega, which is the, it is said uh, to be the second brightest in a Northern Hemisphere. And all of that, as the Lyra is representing about the sound, all these stories and myths which are related to this constellation is about the sound. We are uh, supposed to read the real sound, which is the sound of the soul, but in the highest sense, it's the sound of the monad itself. So uh, the myth is telling about the Orpheus who, who had this Lyra, what was given first by Hermes to Sun, Apollo, and Apollo was giving that to uh, Orpheus. And he was able to chant uh, and create this kind of uh, divine uh, sounds when Argonauts uh, in Argo were moving forward in the area of sirens. So this energy actually when we think about Antakarana building and we are able to align with these kind of high, high energies. And that is my opinion that uh, we cannot even respond really consciously to these energies before we are reaching the, the states of discipleship. The average humanity is totally unaware of these high uh, possibilities which are stored behind, stored behind the Sagittarius. So this is behind the first decanate and all of these um, ideas about uh, how we are, uh, uh, first we are diluted, we have all kinds of sounds, but then more and more these inner sound, the higher sound of by the soul and even higher comes into our lives and is creating this arc or this um, axis, the um, axis axis mundi vega has been earlier our polar star so it and it will come after was it 14000 1400000 uh, years uh, comes again into our 14000 it is sorry um, again to be our polar star 
So this uh, Veka is called Judge of Heaven or Life of Heaven or the Messenger of Light or He shall be exalted. When the vulture, which is the falcon, it is uh, said that it is the falling vulture. So Antakarana is built from both sides, from above and from below. So here we have this uh, idea how the falcon, the higher energy, the solar angels are descending and, and helping us in Antakarana building. So then we have the second decanate Ara, which is a very interesting um, and very, very deep uh, constellation. Uh, upon Ara, the Christ is laid. The, 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 our life, um, it, it, how we move forward in life, we can find this interesting connection from Virgo. In Virgo, second decanate, you will find the centaur. So centaur, again, when we think about Sagittarius and the, uh, its relationship to Virgo, where the Christ is born or uh, the Christ is nurtured, the Christ child is nurtured. So centaur starts to rise. So the movement starts to go towards the Sagittarius and he has a sphere, which is again about this antikaranic movement. The sphere is, um, as you see here, here is the centaur. He is uh, spiercing through the Christ form, which is the wolf. In the early Christianity, the wolf was representing the Christ. So sacrifice belongs to Antakarana building. When we reach that kind of point, we, we uh, willingly, we sacrifice. And even though it is said that uh, it is the victim, so it is the higher victim, it's the higher sacrifice in Antakarana building. And it is brought upon the Ara, where we give the oath. The oath belongs also this Antakarana building because we keep our point in, in something that we are giving to others. And then the last one is Trago, and this is a little bit difficult to um, uh, understand because all the names which are given or which are related to, to this uh, uh, constellation are somehow expressed via the, the consciousness in humanity which is coming from the negative side. They are uh, expressed like the, the serpent accursed, the um, head of the subtle serpent, who, who is to be destroyed, the punished enemy, the bowed down in defeat. So in one sense, when we think about the uh, Drago, it is the Kundalini. And that is in our building, how the Kundalini is moving from steps to step to step and in that sense, sanctifies the matter. So in much more higher sense, the Drago is a huge constellation and we have to understand these higher parts of this um, um, Drago, which is the cosmic Kundalini and which is the, the source of great wisdom which is our gain in Antakarana building. This Shakti which is moving through us and in that sense uplifts us to, to our real state in one point when we are standing as perfect man. So now I'm giving that back to somebody and we have this uh, beautiful image um, made by uh, Francis Donald, uh, who has um, indicated here how Sagittarius is aiming high to the mountain top where the supernal light is uh, glowing already and is, is passing through all of these noises 
into the point of silence, which is the one of the idea of uh, under Corona building and also about Sagittarius. Yes, I'm done. <laughs> So maybe um, I think this is the section of the process uh, in which comments may be made or questions uh, asked before we uh, get into our uh, work of meditation. Really, we're trying to blend two things here. You know, it is a discussion of Sagittarius, and I. Uh, there will be um, some work on that coming up. We always have a, a pre-full uh, moon webinar. I'll be flying back to Europe, but Francis Donald, who is a Sagittarian, <laughs> will be uh, directing the meditation, and he's produced some wonderful um, illustrations. And then uh, Natuya will be creating a, a video for the exact... Uh, full moon meditation uh, coming up about an hour and a half before that uh, meditation, which is on the third. And I think it's at uh, something three something in the afternoon. You can check that in about an hour and a half before that. So anyway, uh, we want to celebrate these energies, but we want to see how they can help us uh, reach uh, areas of uh, vibration which normally perhaps are not part of our consciousness. As I say, we aim high and we aim towards illumination, but the illumination of the triad answers. And when the two meet, the arrow from below and the arrow from above, we have a very uh, strong uh, possibility of revelation, which is what the anti Quran building is all about at least one of the main features so um uh, alexander i don't know how you handle this but um if there are people who have questions uh tui and i will be happy to uh, at least give our take on these things yes absolutely so we uh invite uh people in the circle gather it on the mountain plateau as we visualize it at the beginning to share own uh, thoughts and uh, maybe questions comments and we would contribute thus into building the, our group on takarana in preparation for the meditation so technically you can do that by um, raising your hand it's a function on the control panel um, and we will unmute you or you can write uh, in the uh, question section of your control panel and uh, i will read it um, Michael, I will just start with the questions, and my first question would be technical. You mentioned the coming uh, webinars, and just in case if someone doesn't know about uh, work you do uh, around the full moon and in general, can you say a few words about where people can find information, how to join these webinars, and how they can join them, and how often did they happen? <laughs> Okay, well, I think we can both answer uh, to that. We have this uh, in invocatory program we call ask. And you know, the old saying, uh, ask and you shall receive, knock and it shall be open to you, seek and you shall find. So, um, you know, Tuya, uh, I think pushed quite hard to make sure that we were bringing before the interested public certain meditations on Wednesday, we have a triangles meditations, a work that must go on. Thursday, the Tibetans reappearance of the Christ meditations. And uh, excuse me, if there's a little bit of sound in back of me, it will, I'm in the middle of Grand Central Station here. And um, on Friday, our glamour webinars, the others are broadcasts and the, and the first two are webinars. And then on Saturday, we have uh, the invocation of the soul of nations as is found in the destiny of the nations. And there's more to it as well, uh, because the um, we, we do sort of emergency work when it does appear. 
So uh, there have been so many emergencies at present that we have to intervene subjectively. And on Sunday, the attracting money for higher archival purposes. Now, Tuya does the broadcasts uh, and I do the webinar on on dissipation of glamour. And of course, you know, uh, we, we do work at the full moon uh, occasions as well. So if anybody is interested, uh, I see some people here that actually do participate in some of that work. Uh, please write to me or to Tuya and we will be happy to uh, let you know how you can tune in on the broadcasts and the meditations. So I think, you know, between us all, uh, the 2025 project and the kind of work we're trying to do and that others do, we will present a strong meditative front uh, to accomplish during these final years of the forerunner uh, interior work that has to be accomplished somehow. Uh, because much interior work is needed. Uh, humanity is in a dangerous situation, but has great possibilities, and the disciples have to come through. So uh, we'll be happy. Just write to me, infinitize8 at gmail.com, or to Tuya, uh, Tuya, uh, period S, as in Sam, period uh, Robbins, at gmail.com. And we'll be happy to uh, inform you of the links you can have. Hmm. Okay. okay um, uh, I will um, send the chat. Uh, is, yeah, in the chat. Yes. Yeah, so I'm uh, yeah. as you were talking. I was typing. I will send it just in a, in a second. Um, yeah. I'm checking the um, about the questions while people still uh, gather their mind about the questions. Right. I, I have another question. <laughs> um, from your uh, experience working uh, with your group, uh, please share uh, about the group on Takarana. We have some understanding of individual on Takarana, and you you talked about it. Uh, what about group on Takarana? I really wonder if there is such a thing as an individual. Antikarana, uh, you know, because uh, Antikarana is threefold. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll let Tui address this. Um, I'm just going to, um, I, I, maybe I can have the the chart. Maybe you can put, put me on, um, I can for a moment uh, uh, use one of the Tibetan charts. If possible. Well, Michael, you are taking this uh, chart there. I was thinking something about the, about the group work and, okay. and the challenges at this time. Uh, when we have all kinds of things going on and crises after crises, and uh, again thinking about these descending Shambhalak energies, which have uh, supposedly reached now very uh, down to earth, state and uh, how we see um, humanity was responding. Mm. Uh, it is said that the 2000 there was one impulse of the Shambhalic energies and uh, uh, Deepathan is telling how 14 years it is needed when the higher plane something is descended uh, on the lowest plane. And uh, then uh, 2014 you started to see how humanity is responding. All kinds of separatistic ideas started to flow. You see those uh, um, in different countries, how people are fighting for their own independence. And that is how we respond to that. But um, we disciples should actually uh, get more and more involved about how we unify how we become more and more one, how do we support each other, how do we uh, express more love. And now I really mean love. I have been contemplating that a lot lately because we talk so much about will in this work. And uh, yes, my opinion is that the the love curriculum has not been even established yet. He talks about how uh, the rider on the white horse will 
bring again uh, the understanding about the divine love with and uh, one part of it is about understanding and we need that understanding now and i think disciples really should be those who are expressing the understanding in the world and bring that energy forward mm. that that is something uh, in building this group under Karana, that we stand now with him who is coming. We we don't leave our post. We Whatever it takes now, even we had to stand on our heads now the rest of the seven years that we must do. Okay, well, thank you, Tuya. You know, it's a, it's a first ray, second ray perspective, um, and it's absolutely true. See, in, in this illustration, Actually, Tuya has a better one, but I can't find it at the moment. I'm sorry, um, because there is no red built into the petals of the egoic lotus. Still, it is a useful diagram. You see that the antikarana is triple. And the very first aspect of the antikarana is building from the mental unit into the egoic lotus. Now, this is a very fully unfolded egoic lotus probably just before the fourth initiation but still we build into it and one thing we must realize is that the soul absorbs more and more of the uh, buddhic energy as it unfolds it absorbs it from the buddhic plane uh, and for that reason uh, the, the soul has a uh, a unitive perspective, no matter what the ray may be. So automatically, uh, our our very first phase of antikarana building leads us into a world in which the group is more important than the individual reaching there. I mean, we may use our particular uh, soul ray and personality ray when we build along this part of the Antikarana, and it will lead us into our uh, ashram, uh, you know, when we reach that point. But more specifically, it's going to lead us into the entire hierarchy, which is magnificently group conscious. Uh, from here, you know, there's another aspect of the Antikarana, which we might call the third ray aspect, is sort of thinking our way uh, into the higher abstract mind from the higher mind, into the abstract mind from the higher mind. But what Master DK is teaching us is a very direct, projective, almost first-ray method of uniting the uh, mental unit with the monastic permanent atom. And the minute we've uh, entered the spiritual triad, we are no longer in the area of the individual. Uh, our individuality is much subdued in this triadal area. It is entirely group conscious, planetarily conscious, and it is uh, the step into the monad, which is solar systemically conscious. So we may use certain individual methods to project ourselves into these higher worlds, but once the downflow begins from the higher worlds, and once we like the masters one day stabilize ourselves in these higher worlds, then there's no question anymore about the individual as really important. The individual will always be a member of the planetary perspective. You see, the spiritual triad is not built up from below the way the causal body is. The causal body is built from individual experience over many life cycles. The spiritual triad is not. It is the perspective of the planetary logos, which is always embracing the planet. So we are projecting our way into a waiting group consciousness. And we might say that the most important part of the Antikarana is not our individual method at all, but what we receive from the divine plan and maybe even the divine purpose, which we can then work out individually via the descending antikarana. So in my view, the whole antikaranic process places the emphasis upon the group and eventually monadically upon the one, 
not just the group, it's from the individual to the group to the one. And you'll see that in, um, in Gemini when you look at some of the uh, interesting statements. Maybe I can just show you a quick one here. This is in Esoteric uh, Astrology, and it's about page 332 or so. There it is. Look at Gemini. I serve myself. That's the individual. Then orientation, I serve my brother. That's the group. Then finally, right relation, I serve the one. And we all know how Sagittarian energies tend to unite the many into the one. So this is gathering the many threads on our way into the oneness of the monad eventually. That's where that arrow goes. And then beyond, beyond. But we don't have to worry about that. We have enough to deal with in the very beginning. Okay, well, I forgot what the question was. But anyway, I'm finished on that point. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Michael. Um, there is a question uh, from uh, Daniela. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a second ago was here. I've lost it. Okay, it's in the just in the chat window. Uh, find it. Yes, mm -hmm. you mentioned stages of meditation according to zodiacal signs. Yes. Can you please say more? And yeah, I'll re or I'll let us know that. where we can find more information about it. Okay. Well, three great subjective signs are Aries, Taurus, and Gemini, and they represent the following. Aries represents the mental vehicle, Taurus the desire vehicle, and Gemini the etheric vehicle. Cancer represents the dense physical vehicle inherited from the previous uh, chain and from the previous solar system. Then we get into the meditative process. Uh, we begin to return. We've made the turn. Uh, Leo has to do with the uh, factor of concentration uh, of all things to the point within the circle. It's the symbol of the meditative process in the beginning, and it also symbolizes the master once this has been achieved. Virgo is this meditative brooding upon the inner thoughts and trying to bring forth some value from that brooding. You know, as we brood upon something, it germinates and we see more and more. So Virgo per se represents the darkness, the warmth of the valley. And in that we ponder these thoughts. Libra represents contemplation where we, uh, unite the subject and the object eventually, and we realize they are unified. It's not I, the subject, there's the object. We happen to be in a unity, and Libra represents that um, a marriage between the subject and the object, and also between the human being and the solar angel. Uh, Scorpio is the darkness that leads to light, and hence, in the meditative process, illumination. And it's so interesting that the light connected with Scorpio is called the light of day. When it comes to Sagittarius, the quality is inspiration, meaning it can penetrate into those higher realms if the arrow is properly shot, and the downflow will bring us intuition and the higher light. So it's the arrow of aspiration which touches the higher realms and is the downflow of intuition and inspiration. In other words, we become animated uh, with a higher divine energy. Capricorn is initiation, and that we uh, realize is a penetration always in stabilization into a higher uh, level of understanding. When it comes to uh, uh, the meditative process, Aquarius is universalization, which means that we really begin to embrace the detail of the sensed whole and we understand all of the relationships and finally another eye for us is Pisces is identification where we merge entirely with the subject uh, and we become um, one with being with the substratum which has generated all apparent differentiation DK gives this you know more or less in the astrology book, and uh, you can locate it. Uh, but the real meditation begins with uh, Leo, which doesn't mean 
that Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer people cannot meditate. It just means they have a more descending uh, purpose in this arc. And as the individual, we begin to reascend via Leo until we reach identification, which is the climax of it all in Pisces. Okay. Um, right. That, that's what I have to say about it. Uh, Tuya, did you want to say anything about that? Or I'm just, you know, rattling off my usual <laughs> uh, kind of zodiacal uh, relationship to meditation. Just if to in case if you want to say something, you're muted. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> At the moment, I don't add anything. <laughs> we I, can, I we can have yes. some. The essence of the matter is there. Everyone meditates. Everybody has great possibilities. Everybody can really mess it up by doing the wrong thing. It's just getting the best out of your signs and your planets and your rulers that's what it's all about but he did a sign you know in any life you may uh, in your meditative life if you're a disciple work particularly along the lines which your major signs indicate yeah okay there is a question uh, from Sharon, uh, I think following uh, the quote that you showed on your screen from Esoteric Astrology. So Sharon writes, wondering what the word of power would be within Sagittarius energies. Would it be perhaps, I serve the one, reflective of the divine sacrifice needed for projection? Well, okay, I mean, I think we can use, um, we, we can, we can, uh, use our speculation in these matters. DK has only given us uh, a certain mantra, a spiritual mantra for each one of the signs of the zodiac. But as we as we go deeper into the matter, we find the capabilities of the signs, additional capabilities. And there's no question that Sagittarius is a great integrator. And integration leads to oneness through one pointedness. But it's still aspirational. And one day we have to break through and actually stand panoramically on top of the mountain of initiation in Capricorn. And then we really have arrived. Sagittarius is the step right before initiatory. Uh, arrival. So let us speculate however we like about these signs and if we come up with a meaningful mantra for ourselves uh, in relation to the sign, let's use it, you know. So so it could be any number of things according to the meditator, but DK has only given one. Uh, he's given, I, I see the goal, I reach that goal, and then I see another. He, he also gave, let food be sought. And that's the hunter. And that has to do with the development of the human being along the way. Tuya, you sometimes talked about concentration and mentality in relation to let food be sought. I, I seem to remember. Uh, are you asking me to say this or what? Oh, yes. <laughs> no, it was once uh, some kind of um, idea how how the our mental unit starts to be functioning and and how these energies are uh, starting to centered. When we think about the whatever animal, let's say like a lion, when they see when they focus upon the prey, nothing which goes around them moves them or uh, disturbs them it is just this one pointed will which wants to have food and i uh, this activity is something what i was thinking that has been in in the dawn of our history started to build the point upon the mental plane the the mental unit mm, i think that's correct yeah, and I think it builds the mind in general and unifies the mind, which is very important with the unifying tendency of Sagittarius. It's an integrative sign. And if you read the chapter carefully, you'll see how important it is 
uh, to align the personality with itself and with the soul uh, using the energies of Sagittarius. Yeah, I was actually thinking uh, while you were talking and uh, we were talking about different astrological energies, how uh, every single energy will affect our devic lives. And mm -hmm. that Antakarana building in relationship, because it's, it, we use the word building, and all these um, uh, little lives which are needed for that building that they, they will hold the, their post, as mm -hmm. we were talking earlier. Mm -hmm. So um, we mentioned already about silence. That is one thing what Hercules is learning when he, um, he chases out all of those chaotic sounds within himself in on the mental plane, concrete mental plane. And that is about that the silence is drawing from this devic essence, uh, always the higher quality. So we need to build up within ourselves this higher quality, higher vibration. And the whole life, when we think about uh, ourselves, DK talks about it, that uh, to what condition we are, we are born, we are supposed to live in better condition when we live our earthly life. So are we able to, have we managed how much we have managed and that is all based upon that how we are drawing better substance within ourselves. Yes. You know, I, I just want to say one thing about the group nature of the uh, Antikarana. The, the nine petals of the egoic lotus open at the third initiation. All nine are open and one stands uh, on the verge of the real path uh, of initiation and basically the monad becomes available for the first time to the thinker and Sagittarius leads into that. Now these different ashrams, they're found on the higher mental plane, they're found on various levels of the buddhic plane, I suppose, well, you don't really want to go to the second and the first plane because those are almost like ashrams of the Chohans. Uh, it's very high, it's beyond mastership. And you go to the uh, spiritual or atmic plane and you find uh, first ray ashrams there. So there's still a distinction. But when we get into the realm of the monad, which is all about the oneness of things, then all of these things are brought together. And a type of communication exists between the ashrams, which is, um, uh, not um, separated by distinctions. All of them are seen as part of the purpose which the monad reveals. So let us say that the real curriculum of oneness is beginning at the third initiation for which Sagittarius is the antechamber. And then we enter into the, not only into the group antikarana, but into the Antikarana, which reveals a being. Uh, as DK said, he is an initiate into the mysteries of being, and this should reveal something to us. Well, uh, one who stands in isolated unity uh, stands at the fifth initiation and is a master in the curriculum of being, and Sagittarius leads into that and to the monad. So those are higher kinds of thoughts about our destination. And then on beyond that, the monad travels to other planets and other star systems on the way back to the Pleiades. So it's all quite a journey and Sagittarius rules that journey. Okay, I think I've said what I have to say there. Michael, it's difficult to pick up after you <laughs> and okay, continue to see, but uh, there is one more question um, from Diana. Um, yeah. How does the blending of the opposites of zodiacal signs operate with forming the Antakarana bridge? Yeah, okay. So, um, 
blending of the opposites, you know, usually depend upon uh, Gemini as the intermediary sign. And when Gemini itself is involved, then Pisces becomes the intermediary. And basically what we're attempting to do is to unite the, um, the father aspect with the mother aspect via the son aspect. The son aspect uh, stands for the principle of union and the solar angels are involved there. So the, the mother aspect we might look at as one of the zodiacal signs in the case of an individual and the father aspect as its opposite with the union uh, being promoted by the solar angelic presence within the uh, egoic vehicle. Now, you know, that's, that's breaking it down into quite a detailed, uh, uh, quite a detailed fashion. Uh, you know, to superimpose these blending of the opposites in a zodiacal manner, I guess you'd have to study the chart very, very carefully and see how the personality is ruled and look for the opposite sign uh, in the realm of the father aspect. I don't think DK has gone into that. It would be speculative, uh, but I do think that that kind of uh, discussion is coming in the next uh, installment. Basically, there's a triangle in an astrological chart. And the, this very important, it's not just sun, moon, and ascendant. There's a very important triangle which goes like this, the sun sign, the point opposite the sun sign, and the rising sign. Now, rarely are they going to be, you know, is Gemini going to be the intermediary between uh, two, two other opposites? It can happen, of course. Gemini can be your rising sign, and you can have uh, the point opposite being, I don't know, whatever. It can be Scorpio, and, and let's just say the the, the sun sign can be Taurus, and then you would have a literal possibility of uniting via the, via the energy of the sun, the second aspect, the father and the mother. But it won't always be that way. And let's just say this. Here's how we can look at it. The point opposite the rising sign, if you can respond to the monad, is the monadic energy in any one life. Your sun sign is your personality energy in any one life, and the rising sign uh, will conduct soul energy, which is the bridging, uniting energy in any one life. And you can work with opposites in that manner. Now, whether they'll ever be ideal with Gemini as the, uh, or Pisces as the uniter uh, in special cases, maybe, but you don't have to wait for that. You can just take your sun sign, the point opposite the sun sign and the rising sign, and you can work with the union of personality, mother, father, aspect, spirit, and soul, aspect, son. You can do that. We'd have to write a book on that, right? You know, do that for all the different people. Maybe some of that has been done, but you can just take your own chart and say, this represents the monad, this represents the personality, this represents the soul. How is it working out in my life? How can I unite these aspects? And of course, M yeah, go ahead. Jim. Michael, I was just uh, thinking DK says somewhere about that, that we actually have only six signs that we should uh, always consider the opposing sign or the whatever particular sign because yeah. they, they create the unity. Yeah. So, uh, and, and then also one idea about this, that when we think about the initiatory process, how we are supposed to uh, start to control all of these elements, these four elements for us. Mm -hmm. So all of these signs which are forming the triangle um, via the element. So this is also for us important thing to consider how these energies are working within us. So whatever transit is coming, it is also uh, upon whatever sign, it is always then rela um, uh, also, also influencing the whole triangle. Mm -hmm. You know, he does, there's a wonderful section, I hope he elaborates on it in the next thing, but basically he says you're always on a cross. So which cross are you really on? 
you know, we disciples were supposed to be at least getting onto the fixed cross here. But he says you've got to deal with crosses, stars, and triangles. And you have to find them in the astrological chart. And when you're dealing with crosses, you're dealing with the personality and the material element. When you're dealing with stars, you're dealing with consciousness. When you're dealing with triangles, you're dealing with spirit. Now, every chart is different, and there are probably many, many uh, subtle charts, uh, as some people have developed uh, that, that thought. But we have to think geometrically when we look at a chart. We have to think of the stage of evolution at which the person stands and how we can put these different figures, the triangle, the star, the cross, all together to show us something about the evolutionary possibilities, developmental possibilities of the individual in that particular life. So I hope for all of us that at least we're making the transition onto the fixed cross, uh, the cross of uh, as a blinding light, fiery pain, bitter woe, <laughs> and yet the cross of liberation. And so I just went around the fixed signs to do that. Okay. All right. So we, I wonder if we're at the point here where we're almost in the meditative mode. Oh, maybe yes. is there, or did we answer Sharon Deep's question? She seemed to have something. I couldn't find it. Yes. So that, uh, yeah, I, I read uh, Sharon's comment in the question. Okay. And, okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. Um, yes, I think you're right. We approach now the time when we can uh, go into meditation using all the focus that we've been building up together up to this moment. Okay. Well, the way we're going to do it, um, Julia is going to begin this uh, again, sort of restating the energies that we can reach, and then I'll get into a more uh, a little uh, technical anti-corona process so we can attempt to touch those energies. So I think Tuya will, will go first. Yeah, I tried to, do you see the screen now? I see the blue window. Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry. I find the correct image. Is it now there? That's a nice initiatory image. Right. So let us start the process. First, we aligned, have an alignment of each individually with our own soul. And let us align with the group soul. We feel a growing soul infusion. With a group mind held steady in the light. And now try to read the high Sagittarian energies which can be contacted contacted when the spiritual triad is contacted. And that is said, that is the one which hovers the triangle, which hovers over the square. In that state, we read even higher. Being within the energies of Sagittarius, pouring now via the sun. Turn towards the falling falcon the constellation of Lyra.
Think of these inspirational energies. The falling falcon, which is very much about the truth, the true sound. you find Vega in that constellation, which is also bringing ideas of karma. It is called Weaving Girl. How do we weave with these energies when we build about the group under Karana. And behind the second decanate of Sagittarius, you find the constellation of Ara, the altar. If you have any planets in these decanates, you can always Bring the planet into your meditation. Alter, the Ara is telling about sacrifice. how this sacrifice has come into your life. what you have sacrificed. Master Moria says, whenever you have become less, when you sacrifice. Behind the third decanate, we found, find the great, amazing constellation of Draco. The guardian around the polar star. What do you need to guard? This energy is lifting us, the Kundalini, towards the crown center. When it reaches in the fifth initiation, our head center, the fully opened way is from the base of the spine to the crown.
Or can you make up that, that it is indeed that our little planet would be a base center? in cosmic sense. What value would these energies be in your life? The rising Shakti from below, reaching the highest point in heavens. Imagine that these energies, all of these energies, which are pouring via the Sagittarius, that they are waiting to be descent down along the Antakarana when it is properly built. So, the energies towards which we strive at this time, and we really do mean strive when we think of Sagittarius, are available, especially in the triad. And of course, it really takes a master or a fourth degree initiate to be really focused in the triad, but we can access something. And what we do is a technical process. We, we gather from below the energies of the personality and we visualize them being brought up to the level of mind, especially to the fourth level, uh, the fourth subplane of the mental plane. So the etheric and physical and also the aspirational energies which have a resonance with buddhi, with, uh, with intuition which restructures our emotions, these um, energies are raised up to the plane of mind. And they're concentrated. But energies from above, from the egoic lotus, have to come in to create this pool of retained energies upon the mental plane. So from every circle of petals, the knowledge petals related to the light of the soul, the love petals related to the love of the soul, and the will petals related to the sacrifice the sacrificial will of the soul, these are visualized as being brought into that pool of retained energies on the mental plane. But still further, the sense of synthesis opening up as we even take the first initiation. And also, from the jewel in the lotus, the energies of the extended monad, which affects the soul, even if we don't know it, from the time of the first initiation. So down into that pool of energies retained on the mental plane, the energies of the soul, the energies of the personality, they are brought together. And we're going to develop that soul infused, increasingly soul infused personality. 
This is in the area of the mental unit, which has been growing for a long time, even before a human being was individualized, before animal man was individualized. So just dwell with that accumulation of energies for a moment. Try to feel where they have come from. And then we visualize from that point of accumulated energy is a kind of a great column of light, which has all the seven lights, all the seven rays in it, really, connecting really with all the ashrams, though more specifically, two will stand out. The energy of your soul ray connecting you with a particular ashram and the energy of your personality ray. And as these ashrams are divided into different segments, perhaps connecting you with one of the sub ashrams. But the important thing is the soul ray, a color which stands out more greatly than the others. But we're going to take the second ray approach in a way towards the entire hierarchy, which blends all these different ashrams. And as we say the great second ray word of power, I see the greatest light, we will outwardly sound the ohm on a second ray note, a G. So visualize a shooting forth of the great indigo quality into the great ashram of Sanat Kumara as we inwardly think, I see the greatest light. We'll do this three times. <clears throat> see the greatest light which connects us not only with the second ray ashram but with the hierarchy as a great second ray body and Tuya has articulated these energies which can be found as our projection reaches into the triad it doesn't reach to the very top yet as it were but it reaches in and something of the abstract mind, something of the intuition, something of the spiritual will can descend as we meet these more cosmic energies of the falling falcon in the shape of a harp Sagittarius and the lyre, the string of the bow becomes the string of the lyre. And the energies of sacrificial love, which is very Buddhic in a way, through Ara, the altar, 
and the sacrifices we are willing to make on behalf of the divine plan. And the energy of the dragon, as all of us are bound to become minor dragons of wisdom, our planetary logos is a dragon of wisdom. And the greatest dragon in our local cosmos system is Draco, who gives us <clears throat> first ray, seventh ray power, but also the power of cosmic Buddhi, the serpent religion of Sirius. So, as we project upward, I see the greatest light. Upward and inward, our projection is answered. by these higher Sagittarian directing energies, making of us one-pointed disciples. And we can think about them as the full moon day approaches how to integrate them into our life. The great inspirations of the falcon, the sacrifice of Ara, and the cosmic Kundalini uniting all aspects under the divine will of Draco. These things are descending and we try to feel them descending as the higher end of the Antikarana answers our group projection. And the purpose of the monthly full moons among other things, the Tibetan tells us, is to build into our causal body the quality of each sign of the zodiac. Repeatedly on a higher and higher turn of the spiral until we become the embodiment of the entire zodiac in our egoic lotus nature. We build these qualities of inspiration, of direction, of fiery aspiration, of sacrifice. We build these in, into the petals of our causal body, especially now for people like ourselves, into the sacrifice petals, which open with initiation. And think for a moment having some idea of the great Sagittarian energies cutting through, establishing new points of tension at higher and higher levels. How can these be applied by you, by us in service? How? As you are carrying out your little part in the divine plan, how can these be applied in your circle, in your group circle, and then in your individual circle? because the Antikorana is a two-way street. And whatever inspires us from above 
whatever we reach into has to be applied below. So that's up to each one of us and up to us in our groups. And we're going to build towards the pre-full moon webinar, which is 8 o'clock uh, on the GMT on the 2nd, and also the exact moment full moon, which Tuya will present um, on the 3rd. It's, a three, it's about uh, 3 in the afternoon, 3.56, something like that but an hour and a half before that. We build our understanding, our access to the Sagittarian energies, our sense of being agents of the hierarchy, our sense of <clears throat> using all the rays of all the ashrams, but particularly the ones which are most prominent in the soul for us, and then the personality ray for application, we build towards that. We hold it in mind. And now, if you can uh, help me show my screen, we'll close this little meditative reflection with the great invocation, which I know you all know, but I like to have it uh, up, you know, if possible. And we'll close with three ohms after the last line. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love, Within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh. Oh. Thank you, everyone, on behalf of uh, Tuya and myself. And uh, thank you, uh, 2025 Initiative, for uh, inviting us to share a few points on this Sagittarian full moon. Hopefully, um, your point of tension will build as we approach the full moon. And uh, some little breakthrough will occur that will bring more vision and uh, 
ultimately revelation. And uh, thank you. And thank you from me too, and regards from Finland. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Tuya. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> thank you both for this ongoing endeavor of persisting and doing what you do. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for everybody who is doing whatever you do. Let us hold together our hands and and continue standing and visualizing the path in front of us, which is going to be glorious. <laughs> sounds good. Sounds sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. Okay. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. Lots of blessings. Have a good flight, Michael. <laughs> thank you. I'm running to the airport right now. <laughs> Oh, see you, Michael, here in Finland. <laughs> yes, it's coming. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Thanks to everyone for uh, joining us today and um, uh, uh, for joint work. And we invite you to join our coming webinars. Um, next month, we will have... Uh, quite a number of uh, webinars and several cycles will coincide. The, on December 19th, we will uh, follow the cycle of the new moon work, working with the supporting meditative support for the UN Sustainable Development Goals. We will focus on goal four, quality education. Um, the next webinar after that, we will continue our work following the cycle of uh, solstices and equinoxes and uh, Antonella Nobilio uh, from Italy uh, will lead us in meditation and will share uh, her uh, thoughts and her group uh, inspirations uh, on the astrological significances of the time. Um, then the next webinar it's a new cycle that we introduce this time it's the annual cycle following the Capricorn energy preparing us for the festival week of the new group of world service in December 2019 uh, and uh, the Hikal group from Jerusalem uh, will sound the Capricornian note and uh, there is a possibility that this webinar will be incorporated into the New Year uh, um, Eve's uh, vigil that uh, Tuya and Michael will organize. We'll still need to figure out that. Yes, uh, I'm, I promise that I will send for you immediately something. <laughs> um, yeah, if that vigil will happen, please join. It's uh, last year, it was amazing uh, meditative alignment experience. Uh, uh, that's several hours program with the amazing speakers and presenters joining. Uh, and so please stay tuned. And the next full moon webinar, that's another cycle that we are now in, uh, on January 2nd, please join the Capricorn Solar Festival webinar with Barbara Valacor and Steve Nation, and they will share on the topic of the power of invocation and evocation. Thank you very much. This is the first day of the five days period of the full moon, so let's be, let's, as we practice today and started doing it, continue doing it, keep the point of tension in our joint work. Thank you. And to end the, our work today, let's sound the Gayatri. O thou who gives the sustenance to the universe, from whom all things proceed, to whom all things return, unveil to us the face of the true spiritual Son, 
hidden by a disk of golden light, that we may know the truth and do our whole duty as we journey to thy sacred feet. Oh.